This is a quick video about using Logic Pro's noise gate for voiceover recording and narration purposes to get better sounding recordings. Think of this as a kind of beginner's guide to using a noise gate for voice recordings. In my case, I'm using it for voiceovers on audio and plugin tutorials, but this works just as well for any other type of voice recording like streaming or video conferencing where there's external noise that you don't want being picked up by your mic. Pretty much any digital audio workstation or audio recording program is going to have a noise gate built in, and they're all going to have similar controls. If whatever program you're using doesn't have a noise gate built in, there are some good free VST and audio unit plugins online that you can download. In my case, I'm using a condenser microphone with a pop filter, which picks up any noise really easily. It's good at picking up loud noises, but it's also great at picking up quiet noises, and we don't want that here. This is less of a problem with dynamic microphones because by design, the dynamic mic requires a louder signal to pick up audio and would be less susceptible to quiet room noises coming through. Obviously, this also depends on the mic gain level through your interface. Currently, without a noise gate, my condenser mic would pick up any room sounds around me and the sound of my breathing, as you can hear right here. Even though I'm eight inches away from my mic, it's still picking up breath noise pretty easily, and I don't want that. I have the narration vocal preset loaded up in Logic, and all I've done is added the noise gate as the last plugin in the channel strip. This isn't going to be a deep dive into all of the functions of the noise gate, but I'm going to go over what controls are important to change, what they do, and a simple way to set it up for removing background noise. Right off the bat, it's important to understand that the noise gate is going to stay closed and we only want it to open when we're speaking. That's why you have these two indicators here, and when I'm speaking it opens, and when I'm done speaking it closes. So there's a lot of controls on this noise gate, but the most important ones for us here are these five knobs, threshold, reduction, attack, hold, and release. The attack, hold, and release are the dynamic section of the noise gate. So let's start with threshold. My threshold here is at minus 33 decibels, implying that a sound of greater than 33 decibels is needed to open up the noise gate. It seems to be appropriate for how loud I speak and how far away from my mic I am. Typical speaking volume is around 40 decibels, which would exceed my threshold set by 7 decibels and open up the gate. When I'm done speaking, the input into the mic goes significantly below 33 decibels, so the gate closes and it doesn't re-trigger to open the gate until I begin speaking again. Next is reduction. The reduction of 50 decibels describes that when the noise gate returns to being closed, it's going to turn down the incoming audio signal by 50 decibels. Basically, this is saying when I'm not speaking, any small bits of noise are going to be turned down by 50 decibels, which is plenty to remove audible background noise and breath noise. Now let's move on to the dynamic section of the gate which are these three knobs here, attack, hold, and release. For voice recording, we want the gate to open quickly, so we set the attack to a lower value. We don't want the gate to open too late and not pick up the beginning of the words we're saying, so we're gonna keep that pretty low. The hold part is the minimum amount of time we want the gate to stay open when it's triggered by our voice. For voiceovers, every time we say a new word or make a loud enough sound, we are re-triggering the gate to open. So in this case, we don't need an extremely long hold time, just long enough to get through the words we're saying. If we make this hold time too short, we're going to get a stuttering effect and it's going to cut off the end of our words. The release knob here determines how much time before the audio fades out completely. In the case of voiceovers compared to something like recording somebody singing, we only want the gate to stay open long enough to pick up the words we're saying, and typically there's not a very long tail on spoken words. The look ahead function isn't super important here, but what it does is it delays the input signal of your voice by a certain amount of time to allow the plugin to interpret and process the audio quicker. This is going to help with loud transients and things like that. You don't typically get that with spoken word, and as a result of setting this look ahead to a higher value, we're going to delay the audio coming out of the plugin, which can cause a lot of latency and almost make it sound like you're hearing an echo of your voice. In this case, I'm giving the plugin a few milliseconds to react and process the transients of my voice, 
but it is going to delay the sound coming out of the plugin. I wouldn't put this any higher than 5 milliseconds for this case. And the only other really important thing is the monitor function, which allows you to hear your voice without the gate affecting it. Think of it as a bypass button. Mess around with these controls to get it so your voice is coming through loud and clear and keeping the gate open when you want it to be open. Make sure your hold and release are set so the end of your words aren't being cut off. Set the release so that the end of your words also fades out appropriately and the gate only closes when you want it to remove the unwanted ambient background noise. Something to note is it's pretty important to speak at a consistent volume throughout the entire voiceover and stay a consistent distance from the mic so the gate acts similarly and correctly throughout the entire audio recording. That's a simple breakdown of using a noise gate to remove unwanted background noise from voice recordings. Thanks for watching, and leave a like if you learned something.